Welcome to Buckingham Palace. What you see before you, valued at 1.5 billion, is officially the most expensive home in all of Europe. Behind that heavily guarded facade lies the residence of Queen Elizabeth II, who's lived here ever since she took the throne way back in 1953. Usually, only Her Majesty, her staff and relatives, and her thralls of armed guards are allowed in. Today, that all changes, because with this exclusive entrance card, we've been granted unprecedented access inside the palace's walls. Ready to unveil the secrets of Buckingham Palace and see how the richest members of the royal family spend their time? Then follow me. No chewing gum or flash photography, please. Fantastic! We're just in time to watch the changing of the guard. 11.30 a.m. on the dot. We'll wait here until the soldiers wrap up their routine. As infantry privates, these guards start off only making about 20,000 pounds a year. From our vantage point in Green Park, Buckingham Palace's east front appears as the main facade of a rectangular building, but there's much more than meets the eye. From a bird's eye view, it's actually more of a hollowed square. Up there is the iconic balcony, and this fountain, of course, is the Victoria Memorial, a monument to Queen Victoria. With 775 rooms made up of 19 staterooms, 52 royal and guest bedrooms, 92 offices, 78 bathrooms, and 188 staff bedrooms, we don't have time to see them all, so we'll just tour some of the most brilliant, luxurious, and interesting spots. You can wave to the guards as we enter through the central block, but they won't wave back. Make sure to empty your pockets for the x-ray scanner and check your backpacks into the cloakroom over there. Now that we're inside, Wow, just take a look at that foreboding grand staircase. This 3,900 pound staircase, put in by Queen Victoria in 1898, is the first eye catcher as we enter the palace, truly setting the tone for the palace's unmatched opulence. Follow me through to the crimson and artwork filled state dining room, one of the central block's most important rooms. This is where notable events are held, like William and Kate's 2011 wedding reception. Let's continue through to the State Ballroom, a stunning space that's been used by the Royals since 1856. At 120 feet long by 60 feet wide, this decadent room holds the title of the largest in the entire palace. The organ sits at one end, opposite the elegant throne canopy at the other. All right, let's head upstairs. Here we'll find a number of purpose-specific rooms. Welcome to the Music Room, home of the famous gold $175,000 S. & Pierrard Grand Piano. Across the hallway is the iconic Green Drawing Room, where the Queen hosts her weekly meetings with the Prime Minister. This, folks, is what's known as the 1844 Room, a spot where the royal family greets their most distinguished guests. Diverse names spanning everyone from the Obamas to Angelina Jolie have sat on these blue and gold silk chairs. See that neoclassical desk? It dates back to 1820. Next door, we've got the Regency Room, where the Queen usually does her Christmas broadcasts. But let's skip this one and head up to the six rooms of the Queen's apartments. Her Majesty keeps it very private, so we can't go inside the bedroom, but we can check out her audience room. This is where the Queen often sits with her guests. Within her quarters, of course, sits the Queen's wardrobe. An expensive, enormous wardrobe at that. Take these two dresses, for example. The one on the left, that's the coronation dress from 1953, and the other is her dear wedding dress from 1947, valued at a whopping $1 million each. But hey, with 350 million pounds to her name, she can certainly afford it. Follow me onwards toward the east front, where, en route, some of the more unique rooms await. Whoops, watch out for the corgi coming down the stairs. These $1,500 pups actually have their own room, this one right here. However, they have free reign around the residence. In there is the white drawing room, an intimate gathering space lined with artwork and shimmering thousand-dollar chandeliers. As we continue through the halls, we pass by the chapel, post office, staff cafeteria, doctor's office, and the movie theater. Here, in the east front, lies the center room, furnished in the Chinese Regency style, and the iconic yellow drawing room. As you can see, it's already remarkable, but once the 360 million pound renovation is complete, it will be even grander. Let's stroll all the way to the back of the property. Back here, we'll find the stunning pool room, which extends from the side of the main building and has done so for almost 80 years. Notice the concrete plinths, vaulted ceiling, and large glass windows. These elements were intended to replicate the beautiful style of the Roman baths. A series of secret tunnels run beneath this palace, 
one of which even connects with the House of Parliament, but we're about to go through a different one. Welcome, folks, to the recently renovated Clarence House. As we zip through the five ground floor rooms, you'll notice that it's decked out with all kinds of 20th century artwork. These all belong to the Queen. Clarence House actually stores the majority of her collection. All up, 20,000 works are on display across the palace. Taking into account the paintings stored in the other royal residences, the total collection value is a staggering 10 billion pounds, 13.3 billion US dollars. As we make our way back into the main building, past the 360-year-old wine vaults and into the central terrace, take a moment to appreciate the unrivaled luxury we just experienced. It's truly astonishing. Bonus fact time. While we didn't get to see it today, the Queen actually has a stamp collection worth 100 million pounds. Thanks for visiting. See you next time.